Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Ridge Community Church Podcast. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors on staff at the Ridge, and our vision is to bring the hope of Jesus into every home. So as a piece of that, our goal each week is to bring you something that's hopeful and helpful. So subscribe to this podcast to make sure you don't miss any hopeful and helpful conversations. Hey, everyone, and thanks for listening to this episode of the Ridge Community Church Podcast. If you find today's episode hopeful and helpful, then please follow or subscribe and then rate and review so that more people can find the conversation. When I went to seminary, one of the really influential classes that I took was on financial stewardship. It was this idea that the way we handle money matters, not just as something that's a wise thing that you can do to benefit your life, but also in how you utilize the things that God has entrusted you with. Now, part of that course, we actually utilized Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University as a tool to really understand financial things better. At the Ridge, we're about to offer FPU, And so I invited one of its leaders, Nick Berger, to have a conversation about it, about healthy money habits, and about how to talk about money in general. This is my conversation with Nick. Well, hi, Nick. Thanks for coming on to the podcast. Thanks for having me, John. Yeah. Would you mind just maybe introducing yourself and and sharing a little bit about what you do? Yeah. So uh, my name is Nick Berger, and uh, I am a partner and financial planner with Forward Financial Group. Uh, We're a small independent advisory team based out of Sussex, uh, in the Sussex area. And um, what I do is uh, full comprehensive financial planning for individuals and families, uh, just, you know, helping them navigate this uh, crazy and complex world of uh, retirement planning and, you know, saving for the future and and, uh, you know, walking through different things such as education planning or insurance planning, uh, retirement planning, wealth management. Gosh, it's so, it's so interesting. I feel like everyone has, like, money is so easy to stress about. And so I'm sure you have lots of conversations with people who are like stressing over it or, or uh, kind of working through those things. Is that, like, is that a pretty common thing? Like, what's people's typical emotions as they're talking to you about that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's pretty much. Uh, probably about 90% of the clients that that uh, I deal with on a day to day basis, uh, they have different stresses about money or is their money going to last? Do they have enough to live in, in the current moment? Uh, are they going to have enough for the future? So really, my job is to help help navigate that with them to build some of the confidence to, uh, you know, hopefully be able to put their head on the pillow at night and sleep in peace and not not worry about whether or not they're going to have enough. And I mean, after they listen to this podcast, I mean, it'll it'll pretty much be covered, right? They'll be good to go and set forever. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I hope okay, so. Okay, so so you uh, you and Tim Egger are are leading a a group that's starting in a little bit called Financial Peace University. And would you mind maybe just sharing a little bit about what FPU? I guess that's what the kind of normal phrase is for it. Uh, what mm-hmm. FPU is, and and why did you decide you want to be a leader for? It? Yeah, for sure. So uh, Financial Peace is just a program that uh, Dave Ramsey, who is one of the most well-known Christian financial advisors, uh, had created years back. And uh, what it is, is essentially it's a seven-step process to uh, build long-term wealth. And within that process, uh, some of the things that are talked about is uh, budgeting, debt management, uh, saving for the future, maybe saving for kids' education, um, some insurance planning, um, you know, paying your house off and and obviously giving is a big piece of that too. So there's the building wealth for the long term and giving because some of the most uh, generous people are the people that that have the most. Uh, mm-hmm. If you don't have the money to give, it's it's harder to be to be more generous with that. So um, and the reason that I decided to be a part of this, my wife and I took it many years ago, um, and uh, it was impactful for us. I thought that you know, just seeing eye to eye on everything, uh, even if you do have some good money management skills and and good habits around it, it's still good to, to take the class just to be on the same page with your spouse or a significant other. And, uh, you know, and it, it was so impactful. And I've seen so many lives change through this program. Uh, I'm actually one of the Dave Ramsey Smart Investor Pros, which is just an investment professional helping helping guide people along the seven step process. And, um, you know, I thought that the church that I'm a part of to, you know, make a difference in my community. Yeah. Uh, was, so you mentioned you, like, you, you yourself were a successful, like, uh, you went through different things and it made an impact. Have you seen a lot of people that have had like a similar story? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I see it on a day-to-day basis. Uh, you know, being one of the smart investor pros, I, I'm talking to people who've gone through the program on a day-to-day basis and, 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 and a lot of the things that I see is people who started and, you know, potentially 
50, 100,000, $200,000 in debt. They've completely paid off all their debt. Uh, I've seen people who were bankrupt and uh, five to 10 years later have become millionaires. Um, it's it's really incredible to see some of the journeys that these people go on um, and uh, and just the life change and feeling that, you know, money doesn't control them anymore. Yeah. You, you mentioned, you know, that this was kind of a cool thing because it was a part of the church as well. People have a lot of uh, opinions about the church talking about money, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, a lot absolutely. of a lot of there's a lot of thoughts on that, and a lot of weight that comes into that. Why do you think it's important as a follower of Jesus to like have good habits around money? Yeah, so I mean, I've got I've got multiple reasons uh, that it's important, but um, you know, I think number one, it eases some of your uh, you know, fears around the future, because I think having either not having enough or being fearful about money, uh, I've been there myself, you know, where you just, you worry about it. Sometimes it just kind of becomes one of those things that y- you, you want to have enough, but if you're, if, if you're truly following what God says, and God is the owner of our money, we're just the managers of the money. Um, y- you know, that's, that's one of the reasons that I, I do feel you should have good habits about it because, you know, God wants us to be a good steward of the money that, that he's given us. Um, I think it also allows us to have a more fulfilling and generous life. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, if you don't have good money habits, it's hard to be generous. And um, there's nothing more fulfilling than being generous to others, being able to help others, being able to help your community, to help your church. Um, I think it's also very healthy for marriages and uh, and children to see this because it's also setting up the future of of you know, what our kids are going to do when they, when they're, you know, the ones making the money. Um, but, uh, but for marriages too, I mean, money is probably in the top three or four reasons for the, you know, cause of divorce. And, um, you know, it's in the Bible. Uh, I believe it's one of the most common things, themes talked about in the Bible, uh, mm-hmm. which is, you know, talking about money. And, uh, and that's just because it has such a strong hold on our hearts, uh, because it tugs us in so many different directions. But, um, but I, but I think it also, you know, allows us to prepare for the future. Um, you know, if we don't have good money habits, uh, we don't want to wake up when we're 60 one day or 70 and, uh, wish we would have had, you know, good habits in a younger years, in our younger years and, you know, feel like, Hey, I got to work for another 10 years because I never had the good habits in my thirties and forties or fifties, you know? So, um, so yeah, I think that's, you know, some of the main reasons that, that I feel like the other good habits would be, would be extremely important. Yeah. We talk about like a holistic approach to, to health and just like a lifestyle that comes with following Jesus. It's, it's easy to compartmentalize and, and involve Jesus in certain aspects and kind of I think that holistic understanding. Well, when he's involved in your finances at well, that kind of frees you to do, to be generous, to mm-hmm. have a reduced stress, to, I don't know, see God show up and do some cool stuff. So yeah, uh, I love that. Love that heartbeat. Yeah, sure. I mean, with that in mind, is are there any like good money ha- good money habits? I don't know why that was a tongue twister for me. <laughs> <laughs> are there any good money habits that you can suggest for people to start? Anything you'd recommend right away? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I would say uh, after God, pay yourself first. So that kind of goes back to the whole give, save, live uh, mentality. So you should be giving. Uh, because God should get our first, not our seconds. Uh, but then pay yourself first. So in, what I mean by that is instead of going to, you know, Starbucks for your seven dollar coffee every day, and instead of going to, you know, buy, uh, you know, eight new pairs of shoes on Amazon and, and scroll the internet uh, for things that maybe you don't need, uh, pay yourself first. So uh, uh, what what that is is maybe putting, uh, giving obviously, and then, but then saving. So saving that could be into your savings account that could be into a retirement account that's paying yourself first. Um, and then go ahead and, and start to, you know, live on the rest, which is, you know, go ahead and go to Starbucks and shop Amazon if it's all within your means, uh, which is my second point, which I, you you should always live within your means. So, uh, God gives us a means to provide for ourselves and our family. And, uh, it's your job to live within those means and whatever those means are. Um, Number three, I think you should make a budget. A budget is, it it doesn't matter how much you have or how little you have, a budget is extremely important. It's just a guideline for you to follow, to hold yourself accountable when, uh, you know, when things are maybe getting off the rails, because if you don't have a budget, uh, you know, things sometimes get a little out of hand. We always have those unexpected expenses that come up and it allows you to prepare for them, some of those things. 
Um, number four, I would say, you know, get out of debt and stay out of debt. It's one thing to maybe have a house mortgage because that's a long-term debt that is, uh, that's not an, that's not an overnight debt that we can take care of, but everything else, we shouldn't have consumer debt, which is mostly credit card debts. Um, I understand that student loans are a big, big expense for, for a lot of people. So, um, do your best to get out of debt and stay out of debt because that financial freedom that, that, that gives you is, uh, you know, going to set yourself up for the future. Uh, and then my last, you know, big point is, which I kind of alluded to before is save for the future, because again, you don't want to wake up in the future and, and wish you would have done this, this earlier compound interest is, uh, something that, <clears throat> We don't talk about it very often at church, but um, there's something that's called the rule of 72, which is the amount of time that it takes to double your money. So um, if you take a 12% interest rate, it would take you six years to double your money. Six times 12 is 72. If you get an 8% interest rate on your money, it takes you nine years to double your money. And that's without contributing anything else. Um, so you can kind of do the math on everything else. If you get a 6% return, it takes you 12 years to double your money. Um but that compound interest at a younger age, the sooner you start, the more compounding it has over time. So uh, it just allows you to work, let your money work harder for you so that you don't have to work as hard for your money. So that's that's a big tip that I have for people is just to um, save for the future. So uh, again, that you're not stuck working later when you maybe don't want to work or you're able to take your time, talents and treasures and, and put that towards something else, you know, maybe to serve your community or uh, serve somewhere else in your life that you wouldn't have thought uh, otherwise if you didn't have the money. Nick, that was, that was so expertly, like densely packed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. Uh, you talk about like, I'll just pick, I'll pick a couple from there. One, you talk about budgeting. I've heard of, I was just talking with, with Mark White the other day and we talked about how it, uh, boundaries give, can give freedom and how really budgeting is a boundary, right? You're setting yourself up, but that gives you the freedom both ways. One, to save, but also to spend. Has that, mm -hmm. does that ring true? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that, that having the budget gives you the ability to say that you can spend in, in certain areas that are important to you. You know, that's why you dedicate a certain line item for those areas that are important to you. Some people, for example, really love to play golf. And, um, you know, golf is a, is a pretty expensive sport if you want to do it and, and be decent at it. Uh, so, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, yeah. not that, I'm not that great myself. I really love playing golf, but uh, I, I, I want to get better at it. But in order for me to get better at it, I have to put some money into, you know, getting to the golf course a little bit more often. But if I don't have a line item in my budget to play golf then, you know, I'm just going to find a way to spend the money in other areas because I didn't dedicate that money towards, toward golfing. So, um, yeah, I think it gives you the ability to spend because, uh, you've now allotted that money for a certain area of your life. That's important to you. Are there any tools or anything that you'd recommend with that? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, for, through financial peace university, uh, some of the people that anybody that joins us for that class will learn uh, what's called an, the every dollar budget. Uh, there's an app that Dave Ramsey recommends, which is the every dollar budget app. And uh, that's, that's just a logging app. There's other ones out there as well, like mint or you need a budget. I mean, these are free apps that you can use to just track your budget. Some of them are more manual logging and some of them are um, more of a, uh, an automatic logging where it just tracks your, uh, debit cards or credit cards or any of the other expenses where it just logs it for you. Uh, and then you just have to maybe categorize some of those expenses. But uh, I think that's a good starting point. Um, I guess there's also the good old habit Excel spreadsheet too, that some people yeah. prefer to use just an Excel <laughs> spreadsheet, but uh, yeah. anything is better than nothing. You know, I would much yeah. rather you use an Excel spreadsheet than not do a budget altogether. Um, my team actually has an Excel spreadsheet that, that we uh, give to clients which uh, it's pretty detailed. I mean, you know, some people make a budget and they just say, uh, okay, this is how much I spend on my mortgage and my gas and maybe my, you know, ga uh, electric or we energy's bill and my, uh, my entertainment, but they, they miss a lot of minor details in their budget. They're, they're missing, you know, the phone bills or, um, you know, the children's activities and uh, the dining out and all, all the other small things that are part of your budget. Um, we often see that missed in budgets. So the more detailed your budget is, 
the more likely you're going to have success with that. So, uh, yeah, we give out a, a an Excel sheet that's probably, I, I don't even know, maybe 50 or 60 line items long or 40 line items long that covers pretty much every aspect of your budget, uh, you know, in great detail. So um, that is something that the class will absolutely cover is, is how to build a budget and what should be included. I think that there's there's two types of people, people that just celebrated an Excel spreadsheet and the, <laughs> and the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, no, I think that's I think that's so good because I think that the the word budget is kind of like a buzzword. It's almost like the word diet where it's like, you know, like kind of scary, like not necessarily scary, but we have this natural like, aversion to it, but it's different. Mm-hmm. I think that like you said, you you budget out and you plan how you're going to spend it and it's not all negative. It's also positive stuff. Yeah, I, I don't a, think it's restrictive at all. I don't think that, uh, you know, having a budget, if you look at the negative side, people would say, well, that's going to restrict me. That's not going to allow me to make certain decisions with my money. But if anything, it's going to free up your money. It's going to free up those opportunities to things that you want to do. Um, so, yeah, I would agree with that. The second thing I'll say is is for people that are currently experiencing, like, that are experiencing a lot, I don't know, what, what encouragement would you have? I would say that debt... Uh, it's a short-term thing. It can be a short-term thing. You absolutely have to be, uh, Dave Ramsey calls it gazelle intense. Um, so you have to have that gazelle intensity to get out of debt. Um, it kind of, it becomes a motivation. And once you start seeing some momentum with, with it, the, the momentum builds very fast. Um, I have seen hundreds of thousands of dollars paid off in debt from so many people. And, uh, it's not that these people are making, ridiculous salaries either they're making you know a very modest middle class income and they've just made it a motivation to get out of debt so everybody can get out of debt um now some of it your income your income does matter and Mm -hmm. and dave ramsey will tell you that your income is your greatest wealth building tool so uh sometimes that means you have to make some sacrifice it might mean you have to pick up a second job it might mean that you have to cut some things that you didn't want to cut in your budget Okay, so switching gears a little bit, what do you feel like people have as some common misconceptions about good money habits? I think that the top misconceptions uh, that I see is that uh, number one, you know, if I make enough money, I don't need to have a budget. And again, I, I would say that's completely false. As I mentioned before, it really doesn't matter how much you money. Maybe you can live within your means, but are you doing? the best or are you being the the steward that God wants you to be with your money? Are you allocating your money accordingly as to where, you know, maybe it should be best spent. Um, so um, one of the other areas is that uh, I, I kind of alluded to saving for the future, but you know, just that there's this mindset that I can save for retirement later. I can always wait uh, to do this later on. And if you go back to what I was talking about with compound interest, you know, I would argue that that's, that's definitely a misconception that the, this should be taken care of now and and not waiting for the future. Um, you know, uh, another one is just maybe that you, you need more, you have to have more to be able to give. Again, I don't think that's true. Um, I think God gives us exactly what we need and, and then some. So um, I think, again, this just kind of goes back to maybe reprioritizing some things in our life. And, and if you do prioritize God as, as a center of your life, um, that should become a priority within, within your budget. Um, but uh, yeah. And, the, and another one too, is just, you know, may, maybe making more will solve your problems or, you know, make you happier. Yeah. So money doesn't solve your problems. Um, it, you know, it doesn't fix you know, relational issues that uh, you have maybe with your spouse or a friend or a family member or one of your children. Um, it doesn't it, it doesn't equate to more happiness. It might bring you more comfort in life. It might take away some of your fears around, uh, you know, whether you're going to be able to provide or or whether you'll have enough. But um, but that's something that we see very often. And I've seen some of the people that have the most money who are the most miserable people. Um, and also people that have very little that live within their means and are some of the happiest people. So um, I would just say that that that's bigger than just the amount of the, the amount that you take home in your paper. I think there's some something to that that the because there's some like underlying things built in with that, right? Because what I'm hearing you say is just that if you're able to be, con- mm-hmm. it's a powerful thing, right? And so you can Absolutely. if you're content and you, then you have this freedom and this like peace, really. But 
if you're not content, even though your means may expand, you still won't be content. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a couple of times I've heard you mention this, like the relational side of money, talking about money can be really hard, right? How do you break through that? Like, do you have any advice for like, maybe even if it's like talking with a professional or if it's talking with your significant other, what have you seen that's helpful for people? Yeah, I, I actually see that talking about money is hard for a lot of people. Um, you know, there's a lot. And the reason it's hard for people is because, you know, many people are either embarrassed. They're embarrassed on the decisions that they've made in their past or they're embarrassed. They maybe don't feel like they, ha they have enough or uh, they just, you know, they're embarrassed about their whole situation. So they don't want to share it. Um, they're fearful about money. They're fearful about their future. They're fearful about their current situation. They're fearful to open up their uh, vulnerability about this topic and to, to talk to somebody about it. Um, and, and sometimes they just lack knowledge or understanding and maybe they're a little bit intimidated by it. So uh, in some cases, uh, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, things like investments and, and planning for the future, that's that's an area that that people are often intimidated about. So what I would recommend is is find an accountability partner, find somebody that you trust first and foremost, and, you know, be willing to to be a little bit vulnerable with them. And that doesn't have to be your spouse. I mean, your spouse is a good, uh, a good starting point, a great friend or somebody at the church or somebody that you feel you can be vulnerable with. Um, and then secondly, find uh, a professional to help. Um, we talk about, you know, general overall health, whether that's mental health or physical health and so, you know, sometimes people are hiring life coaches or uh, mental health coaches or um, therapists to help with some of these things. And uh, that's really what a financial professional does as well. It's just somebody helping you with those things. Um, you should always be looking for somebody who's working in your best interest, not in the interest of themselves, which, uh, you know, in our industry, we call that a fiduciary. But um, but that's something that uh, I would strongly recommend is find somebody that that you trust. Um you know, whether it's through a referral or somebody that you can, you know, sit down with and talk about this and can maybe be a financial coach for you. Through the Ramsey program, there's many uh, financial coaches and then there's also uh, many smart investor pros, but uh, but there's many, many really great financial professionals in the area who'd be able to help navigate some of these, these hard topics. Um, it, unfortunately, it does sometimes cause some discomfort and it does cause some vulnerability in these areas to open up about this. Um, but you just don't know where it's going to potentially change your life. Yeah. You really have to ask yourself, like, what's the most important me to feel comfortable in this to try to do it on my own, or is it more important to cultivate and be financially wise? And I think that there's a lot, there's a lot of different emotions that can go into that for a lot of different people, right? Whether it's fear, or pride or whatever. Yeah. Um, ultimately, I think when you recognize those emotions in yourself, like to actual to having an honest conversation with yourself, you can start to kind of well, should I really let my fear of this be driving me? Should I really let my pride on this issue be driving? And mm -hmm. the answer is no, then ask for some help. Yeah. And, and I think we've, you know, we've talked about it in some of our messages at the church before as well is, is just um, that we grow better in circles than we do in rows and, mm -hmm. and just that having that community or, or, you know, a, a few people around you that are helping guide you in these areas and to hold you accountable um, I do think that's extremely important because walking life alone on a, on a financial standpoint, it's, it, it's hard and there's so many decisions that have to be made. And sometimes it's just nice to have somebody to bounce an idea off of. Do you have any advice for like couples that have a hard time seeing eye to eye on money? I know, I know it's a whole, <laughs> yeah, I know it's a whole uh, can of worms yeah, right there. But. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I, I think again there that that goes back to probably having a mediator, somebody you know that mm. that's an unbiased opinion, you know, and, and that might be a financial professional, and maybe it maybe there's some compromise there on yeah. you know what type of person you're looking for. I think when you're picking somebody in the industry to to help you with these things, you're looking for not only somebody who's knowledgeable about what they're talking about, um, you know, somebody who has a little bit of experience, but also somebody who uh, fits with your situation from a personality standpoint and mm -hmm. somebody that both the husband and the wife or or you know whatever it may be the partners are they're they're looking to um to this person to say hey this is a uh this, this is somebody that we both trust and we both can can see eye to eye with that's so good i guess i think you you've mentioned a few times but that's uh the 
the stress of money, the arguments about money. I mean, no one wants those. Putting yourself in a position to kind of alleviate the ones that are currently happening, kind of prevent the ones in future is is a really helpful and healthy thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. I don't know, Nick. Any any final thoughts? You know, um, <clears throat> no. I I really just think that um, for the people who have not heard about Financial Peace University, um, that I, I really do think it's life changing. I think that this is something um, if you're struggling or not sure where to go, you know, with your budget or debt payoff, saving for the future, you know, building an emergency fund, how to, uh, you know, set aside a proper amount so that if something happens with your job or, um, you know, you need to get by maybe a medical um, unfortunate medical situation happens that you can get by for a period of time, um, you know, or just want to talk through some of planning for the future, saving for your uh, or insurance planning or saving for kids' education, things like that, giving it um, to, you know, church or good causes that, that you believe in. Um, it, this really is a life-changing class. So, uh, so I, I, you know, I strongly recommend it if, uh, you know, if you're struggling in any of those areas of your life or have questions about that, because you'll not only learn something, but uh, hopefully you'll see some, some positive changes in your life that, uh, you know, only God can do. And there's something about going through it with other people, right? Where you're in a, you're able to kind of bounce ideas and conversations off people around you too. So absolutely. And, and nothing in the group uh, is, we don't get to a point where people are sharing personal information in front of everybody. So uh, I know that's maybe one of the fears is I don't want to mm -hmm. talk about my financial situation in front of everybody. So uh, we do sit down in the smaller groups and, uh, you know, Tim Egger and myself who lead the class, we're able to help, you know, navigate some of those questions and be there for you on a more personalized basis as well. So, uh, you know, for the people who are fearful of maybe talking about money in front of a group, um, really the structure of the class is not where you're going to be sharing all of your personal information. That's really good. I think sometimes we have those fears and hesitations and calling them out is super helpful. Well, Nick, mm -hmm. thank you so much for, for chatting with me. And I really, I really echo what you're saying and encourage anybody that is thinking about this or stressed about money or just need some guidance in that area or really anybody who hasn't taken uh, financial peace university before sign up, come join the class. It starts on March 1st. You can, uh, you can find out all the information. You can sign up at the ridgecc.com slash FP. That'll also be in our show notes. So if you don't remember that, that'll be there. But thanks, Nick. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. I appreciate it. Well, that was my conversation with Nick. And I hope your takeaway from that conversation is to go through FPU if you haven't done so. Creating financial health is important in so many areas of your life. And we want to provide some things that can help you get there. You can find all the information that you need at theridgecc.com slash FPU or in our show notes. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Ridge Podcast. And make sure to follow and subscribe so that you don't miss any hopeful and helpful conversations.